For this GCSE Biology Required Practical, we will be investigating the effect of antiseptics on bacterial growth, and you will need the following equipment. Eye protection. A sterile agar plate. That is to say, a plate which has been treated at high temperature and pressure, so it is completely clean and free of microorganisms. A marker pen. A bacterial culture. Here we have a culture of Micrococcus luteus. A Bunsen burner. A sterile glass pipette and pipette teat. The pipette is wrapped in foil to keep it sterile, having previously been treated at high temperature. A beaker of disinfectant. A sterile glass spreader. Again it is wrapped in foil to keep it sterile, having previously been treated at high temperature. Metal forceps. They must be made of metal so they can be held in a Bunsen flame and sterilised. Some small paper discs. Three different antiseptics to investigate. Here we have antiseptic mouthwash, liquid and cream. And finally, sellotape and scissors. Before we begin, it is important to point out that the method contains steps to prevent contamination, and together these are called a septic technique. Contamination can occur when microorganisms from your surroundings get onto the agar plate and spoil your results, or when bacteria from the investigation get into your surroundings and cause a potential health hazard. The first thing you must do is clean the desk with disinfectant. Then wash your hands using antibacterial soap and running water. Using the marker pen, divide the bottom of the agar plate into quarters and number them one to four. Also write your initials, today's date and the name of the bacterium around the outside of the plate. Make sure the lid stays in place to avoid contamination. Light the Bunsen burner and work close to it from now on, as the hot air currents carry microorganisms up and away from the plate. Loosen the lid on the bacterial culture, but do not open it yet. Unwrap the pipette just enough to attach the teat. Do not touch the glass or put the pipette down, as this will contaminate it. Turn the Bunsen to a blue flame. Then, use the little finger of the hand holding the pipette to remove the lid from the culture, and using the other hand, immediately pass the neck of the bottle through the flame. Draw up a little of the bacterial culture using the pipette. Pass the neck of the bottle through the flame again and loosely screw the lid back on. Flaming the neck of the bottle creates an upward movement of air, so microorganisms do not fall into and contaminate the culture. Slightly lift the lid of the agar plate at the side nearest the Bunsen burner. Use the pipette to put two to five drops of culture, roughly the size of a five pence piece, onto the surface of the agar and replace the lid. Safely dispose of the pipette by placing it into the beaker of disinfectant. Carefully unwrap the spreader, but only touch the handle and do not put it down, as this will contaminate it. Again, slightly lift the lid of the agar plate at the side nearest the Bunsen burner, and spread the bacterial culture all over the surface of the agar using the spreader. Replace the lid and safely dispose of the spreader by putting it into the beaker of disinfectant. Sterilise the tips of the forceps by holding them in a blue Bunsen flame until they glow orange. Once the forceps have cooled, use them to pick up a paper disc and dip it into the first of the antiseptics. Again, slightly lift the lid of the agar plate at the side nearest the Bunsen burner, place the disc at the centre of section 1 and replace the lid. Don't forget to make a note of which antiseptic is in section 1. This process can then be repeated for the second of the antiseptics. And then the third. In the fourth section, place a paper disc without any antiseptic. This will be your control. Use three strips of sellotape to attach the lid to the agar plate in three separate places. Do not seal the lid all the way around, as the anaerobic conditions can cause growth of hazardous bacteria. You must now clean the desk again, 
with disinfectant and wash your hands again using antibacterial soap and running water. The agar plate can now be kept warm or incubated at no higher than 25 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. Any warmer than this and there is an increased risk of growing hazardous bacteria. Upon removing the agar plate from the incubator, we can clearly see the zones of inhibition. Zones of inhibition are the areas around each antiseptic disc in which bacteria have not visibly grown. You will now need to draw a results table similar to this. For each antiseptic disc, use a ruler to measure the diameter of the zone of inhibition. Here it is 10 millimeters. The diameter will need to be measured a second time at 90 degrees the first because zones of inhibition are not always circular. However, here it is 10 millimeters again. The mean average diameter can now be calculated and in this case it's the same. The zone of inhibition is much bigger for this second antiseptic with a diameter of 20 millimeters from top to bottom and 20 millimeters across. Again, the average is the same. The zone of inhibition for this third antiseptic measures 16 millimeters vertically and 14 millimeters horizontally. So the mean average diameter is 15 millimeters this time. The control has not stopped the bacteria growing at all, so there is nothing to measure. We then halve the diameter to find the radius and calculate the area of each zone of inhibition using the formula pi r squared. In conclusion, we can say the antiseptic liquid was most effective at preventing the growth of the bacterium Micrococcus luteus, followed by the antiseptic cream and finally the mouthwash. In fact, when we compare the area of the zones of inhibition, we can see that the antiseptic liquid was four times more effective than the mouthwash.